we have one more session here. We had originally had another session here, Anatomy of the Tech Team, but there were so many of the topics that Jason covered and we covered in the first session uh, and had had some interest in more information on video as an audio engineer needs to see it. We're not going to try to solve all those video things. Some of this overlaps a little bit with your networking thing and with uh, what you did earlier. Uh, we can go off into some detail on some of those things and uh, or not. Um, when we finish this session, the last session of the day was supposed to be a town hall meeting. I'm going to tell you in advance what I'm going to ask you to do because I'm going to ask all of you to come down here close to the front. And all of the presenters that are still here that, uh, that can participate will just ring out here and we're just going to have a conversation. Uh, it'll be a time that you can ask more questions and dig in. We can ask you a few questions about, uh, about your situation that might help us uh, spark a few bits of uh, additional input. And we'll talk as, you know, we've got a 45 minute period slotted. If nobody wants to talk, well, we can not talk, but we can, I think there's a little bit of interaction and a little bit of working together and, uh, and doing that. So uh, you're all spread out up there. That doesn't make for a, a very effective dialogue. So. We're going to go. It's like a church event. It's like yeah. Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Still so normal. we're going to go through this. We're going to pull you down. We want people in the front row. Uh, we'll pull a couple of shorter chairs over so we're on your level, and then. Uh, <laughs> he is short. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's true. And if we finish this earlier, we may start earlier. I'm going to let the um, the tech teams that um, the the guys who from Spectrum Sound who did so much to make all this happen and uh, the guys from Digico and stuff, if they want to come in and start tearing down behind us, we're going to let them and, and they'll be respectful of what we're doing, but I don't think it's going to get in the way of us just having a, a conversation, so uh, helping everyone out. So we want to talk about, so in worship tech, what's the first thing you talk about when you talk about video? Audio's core. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> there's reach, preacher. Yes, exactly. So there's no more. So. And the audio guys know more about sync than video guys. Right, sense. and they know more about tech, and they're going to be called upon to do it. Who is the most knowledgeable person in most houses of worship? It is the audio guy. Usually the best looking, too. Exactly. Best exactly. <laughs> or she. Well, in that case, definitely is the best looking. <laughs> One of the things I noticed over the last couple of days, when we did have a glitch that involved a video or you didn't notice it that much, the information kept flowing. If the lights went out, you could have the information keep flowing. Audio is the core communication here, and that's where the foundation of it all is. If we can avoid audio glitches, we avoid the, the, um, the congregation noticing most issues with the service because the others, they, they kind of roll off as long as that information flows keep coming and the information core is audio. Yes, there's content and video. Yes, lighting can help set a mood and set an atmosphere, but uh, without yes, the they audio, have more so, budget. Yep, yeah, and they have more budget than that. Without audio, you know, there's no communication. So this is the old, the old cliche from, uh, from the past. It's like, what's video without audio? Well, that's a uh, silent movie. And uh, that was last in vogue in 1920. <laughs> About 75 years before I was born. <laughs> Maybe 80 years before. I so was in born. 2000, in, in 2020 anyway, you know we uh, we, we you're not going to find audio video much without audio. And even if the audio isn't spoken word, isn't information, it is mood setting and such. And you you don't you don't play a YouTube video that doesn't have maybe a GIF. Uh, it doesn't have audio on it, but it does have it. So, Although, this is a good time to say yes. that, um, uh, speaking about audio, uh, a lot of folks are doing this now, is uh, the subtitles, right, on your oh, video yeah. later. Right. So you, you upload the video, I mean, you could do it in real time, but um, and there are a few services, but uploading mm -hmm. them often. My wife doesn't like to listen to the audio on the video, mostly because our son is sleeping and she doesn't mm -hmm. want to wake him up. And so she'll pull up and watch, you know, entire, you know, YouTube videos um, or Facebook videos and just read the subtitles. So that's right. something that a lot of us are really starting to look yeah. into is like, how can we incorporate this on the back half to mm -hmm. get get the subtitles into the Facebooks and the YouTubes and stuff like yeah. that. So the, the not friendly for work yeah. kind of thing exactly. where you're going to have your, exactly. your YouTube videos muted. Exactly. So resolutions in simple, this going to... Um, broadcast resolutions and video monitors. We're going to start, I just wanted to pull this graphic up. Uh, we're not starting in any particular order here, but there's kind of a rhyme to it. Um, everybody hears about 4K. So 
Don't you love marketers? Okay, so we had 480p. Nobody knew what 480p was, except unless you worked in broadcasting or a television station or such. But 480p is your old standard def. What's 480? 480 is how many pixels wide the image is. What is, and 640 is the number of lines. And P means we're gonna send information every line. If we stuck an I in there, that means we're sending every information every other line, and most people don't notice it because their televisions aren't high enough resolution or big enough to where that's an issue. So the difference between I and P is, uh, in, is interleaved or, um, or, interleaved or um, progressive. Yeah. And so 720 was only available in a progressive flavor. That's you know taking that resolution up double. And then you go to 1080 and 1080i and 1080p, and that was our consumer high end uh, for some time. And then somebody said, this is too confusing for people. And 1080p and the next one we're going to go to, we're going to talk 2160, and these numbers are confusing people. I think most people have kind of figured out it's a bigger number than the last one, so it must be better. But then they decided, though, we're going to call that 4K. And we're going to go in the wide length instead of the instead of the uh, tall. So it's, which I said wrong down there, 680 by 480. Obviously, it was uh, 640 wide, 480 lines high. Uh, so we're going to go by the widest, or the other way around. We're going to go by the widest number. We're going to buy the biggest number because 4K is a better marketing number than 2K um, is. And if we go to 2K on that, then then this becomes 1K, and that would you know 1080 would be considered 1K. So now you can call 1080 2K, and you're going to see that in specifications. You're going to see that on cameras and such. And we call um, 4K is the is the bigger image in uh, in that 16 by 9 resolution. It's it's uh, it's 4096. So and uh, when you're streaming out there, mm -hmm. don't stream in 4K. You probably won't even be able to. And so, you probably won't have the bandwidth. Yeah, exactly. Your your entire internet will die. Yeah. I don't even, I don't honestly I don't know that there's any I mean there are four K encoders, but there's right. none available for us to have access yeah. to. So maybe when Magic Five G saves us all. Yeah, right. It fries all of us. Yes. <laughs> fries all of our minds. So Anyway, anyway I just guys I, worry about that. Some of this, I will confess, I had a lot of graphics that I put together in various articles over the years and stuff, and I went through two and a half years worth of uh, worth of graphics and said, "Oh, that one's that one's relevant." And I pulled some of these in, but I think they are. Um, I, I made them for a reason because they were needed to explain a concept. So video interfaces, and we're going to talk about. Say yeah, go ahead. On, no, please. On the resolution size, yeah. so uh, you know, I because I'm an audio guy, I can't help but convert things to audio terms. So. When you look at 4K down to 480 or 720, you know uh, you want to capture everything at the highest quality you can, mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, doesn't mean that. Um, what am I trying to say here? Uh, capture at the highest quality you can, but know that you're going to be downgrading it anyway by the time it goes out. Right. Uh, same thing with the. Uh, I had a producer say one time, "Well, who cares how?" How could we capture this? How good we, how good the converter is with mic pre? Everybody listens to it through a computer speaker anyway. I'm like, oh, yeah, I, mean, I can listen to a crappy recording through that and it sounds worse. Or I can slightly listen to a better recording and it sounds better. So it does translate. Yeah. And and who knows in the future? You know, bandwidths get bigger. You can sure. stream high resolution audio now. We will be able to stream high resolution video at some point. Yeah. And at that point, you don't want to be behind the eight ball just because you didn't buy a little extra storage and save it that archive it that way so you can reuse good content. Yeah. Just so you hear I don't, a lot from the uh, integrators and it kind of drives yeah. me nuts the you know, future proof. Uh, there's just no such thing. So <laughs> walk away if somebody says that to you. Um, but at the same time forward thinking instead of future proof. Yes. There you go. So this is just a very fast slide. Let's just say there's a lot of interfaces out there. We're going to talk about several of them. There, there's SDI, there's HDMI, there's 10-base T, there's VOIP, there's DVI, there's Component Composite, VGA, SGGA. Uh, that one should be XVGA, Video and Dante, XVV. So we're going to cover all of those in shallow detail. Uh, <laughs> but let's demystify a little. Okay, any questions? <laughs> that was it. Next, next slide. There you go. So. 
and this was hastily thrown together. If there's errors on there, these guys can correct me. But this was pulled out of an uh, out of an article I done. And I, I and I readily confess it's when I started editing a um, an AVI magazine instead of an audio magazine or an AVL magazine, audio video lighting. It's like oh, gosh, I had video and lighting stuff in college, but you know, I, I other than the consumer side of it, I haven't kept up with a lot since here. So. The first two years, I assigned myself all the basics article and all the fundamentals and articles on interconnections and such so that I could go back and, and refresh my own memory and, and learning and such. So um, interconnection formats that are available, um, you know, composite, RCA, short, standard definition, resolution, for all important purposes in our applications, there's none. Ignore it. Uh, component analog. You know, the same kind of thing, really. It's SDI to that. You don't want to go there. You blow it up to something like this, and I'll show you a picture later of what things look like blown up from low res. It's, yeah, it's not good. Yeah, and I will say, if you have component uh, DAs and stuff laying around, hang on to those, because we can use it for our sync. So mm. the sync is nice. still, the sync um, for, um, for video is still an analog signal. Um, so hang on to those component DAs so that you don't have to go back and buy all new DAs because you threw them all away because now you're going to sync up your audio or sync up your video system. So, okay. um, For computer outputs, there's still a lot of churches that are using at least XVGA, probably not below that. Max resolution, of course, is, uh, you know, in computer terms, it's, it's 1280 by 800. Um, hopefully you're going to get to move to HDMI and you're going to upgrade that computer soon or upgrade the video card or um, uh, the outboard interface if it's, a, uh, if it's a laptop and get away from that, but they're still in use. Again, uh, BNC for component analog, uh, 10 or 15 feet is, is a good rule of thumb. Uh, D-sub for uh, XVGA, 10 or 15 feet, again, uh, that. DVI is a particular connector that has analog um, applications and video applications. It's a multi-pin connector. I've got a picture of some pinouts on the next page. Uh, but it was a kind of a bridge before, uh, before HDMI came in. Right now I've got like an old Sony, I have a tube HD TV, a Sony Trinitron tube HD TV. It weighs 260 pounds. It will never move from where it's at until it's dead. And then I think I'm gonna drop it out the window to get it to the, to the bottom floor of the house because I'm not carrying it. It heats the, the house too. Yeah, I was gonna say if the if the HVAC yeah. ever goes out, he can still stay warm. Its digital input was was its was DVI, and I had to uh, had to interface over to that from uh, from HDMI on uh, TV. There's a lot of interfaces. We're not gonna spend a lot of time on that. Uh, again, 10, 45 feet maybe on on good cable, and depending on your resolution, actually, if you probably go up to higher resolution, you probably need to keep to the 15 feet. HDMI. Now that's our new standard. Now for all, most of our purposes, you need HDMI, you need SDI, or you need an Ethernet-based format. Um, HDMI, it's a multi-pin connector you're probably familiar with. Picture on the next page, 3 to 45 feet. 45 feet is really pushing it. It's really pushing 15 it. Feet at 4K, and 15 feet at 4K. Now, I only put that on there because at max resolution, you could get away with that, but I would never try it. Um, they make. Um, uh, they also make um, fiber optic HDMI cables, which yes. you all have probably seen. Or active, also not necessarily fiber optic, but active. So mm -hmm. a lot of times, hey, yeah. we need to. We got a conference room. We got to go. You know, 50 yeah. feet. Well, we can get an active cable. And, and for any format, you're going to find. Yeah, yeah, you're going to find converters over to fiber optics. You're going to find converters over to BMC. For instance, the switcher that we're using <coughs> in this room is SDI. The output of my laptop is HDMI. The mirrored output of the Waves LV1 is HDMI. Uh, so the video from those is both hitting a thank you TNDV. Uh, their truck loaned us uh, several HDMI to uh, SDI converters, and those are feeding. What's that? So they're all hiding under that. Yep, they're hiding under the table. Um, you can lift the lift the skirt and show. I don't know. Whoa. Oh, they're decimators. Good. So you can also scale and, and format convert. See? Oh, he knows That's right. <laughs> the man behind the curtain is a red box. So those are going up there. The cameras, I believe, both are SDI or you? Okay. But if there was an HDMI cam, we would have need another one of those boxes because that switcher is only SDI in. 
and such, and then coming back down and getting back into their system, the system for the projector is HDMI, so we're converting it back the other way. There are converters, there are utilities out there. Again, somebody that worked at Vanderbilt called me one day and said, how do I run an, you know, an HDMI this far? And it's like, well, Google Ether, HDMI Eagle, uh, Ethernet converter. You've got tons of Cat5 around there. And he said, yeah, it's in the walls already. It's like, you're, you're golden, man. You know, just uh, get the converter, plug into the wall, unplug at the other end, convert it back, you're there, bam. Don't worry about ground loops, don't worry about distance, anything else. So uh, SDI, BNC, 1,000 feet, you can get a fiber version, you can go theoretically miles, the max resolution. There are 3G versions up to 24G versions and bigger versions worked on. They might have gotten up higher than that since I've worked on this. Um, are we higher? Luke, 8K. No, but um, get, mind if you're going to run a thousand feet, yeah. um, you're going to need to have a pretty seriously high quality cable yep. to hit that length, even for even for 720. So, and that is optimal. Yes, again, that, yeah. that's max length. Your yeah. mileage will likely vary. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we always say, if you're going to be in the copper domain, think of that 300 feet as your starting point. Yeah. On video, can you get away with some longer ones? Sure. Um, but, you know, can't keep that in the back of your mind. Absolutely. And then, Ethernet-wise, um, we've, we've just talked about several of the audio formats. There are emerging formats that are, that are marrying video with that. Uh, HD Base T is designed for uh, video. It also carries audio. Uh, SDI. Yeah, it, it carries audio, it carries network, it right. carries control, um, right. power. It doesn't carry power, but power is transmitted over the phones. Yes. And that's their key way. We talked about 10 base T and 100 base T and mm -hmm. gigabit. That's their key way, HD base T, of saying, oh, it's for video. Yep. So. Yep. And HDMI also carries audio and, and carry it by directional and such, too. Audio I, and, I, and I, Ethernet and all that. You go and you buy. I had a, um, a Roku box at home that would only do, wouldn't do 4K. Bought a TV that'll do 4K internally, but I need the audio back down. Had to go buy a new receiver that would actually support the uh, <laughs> the return of the audio because my receiver was too old. But uh, thank you, Whoop.com, for the 50% off the rebuild. I know. Uh, <laughs> Where's the link? <laughs> Click here to subscribe. Make sure you hit the like button. <laughs> yeah, watch that sucker. Uh, ABB, TSN, we talked about that earlier. You know, it's audio video bridge. You're, t you're blending the two together. You've got that capability now with Dante is adding where you can add, add video onto it. QLAN as well. QLAN we'll as well. And then, of course, the emerging standard for broadcast and such is, uh, is MTST 2110. And that's probably going to be the professional world default, at least in the broadcast world. Perhaps not for so much for live sound that's got video running now. So, but that's really the, the target, the moving target moving forward. Yell any questions anytime. So the quick montage of, of connector photos. Ignore all the ones on the bottom of that. You know, those are like yeah. Fortunately we don't have to worry about uh about those on, on computers anymore. And uh and we hopefully with uh the bad thing about Mac going to all USB C is you've gotta have a dongle. The good thing about it is well the dongle can can serve whatever your needs are and you don't have to have your old laptop have one connector and your next one have another connector and your next one have another connector and we'll pass that. Um, the, the top left one over there is your, uh, your old standard computer. You know, go back to VGA, that might be a nine pin connector. You go up to uh, SVGA and XVGA, it's gonna be a 15 pin D-sub. Uh, unfortunately, those are also on their way out. The familiar HDMI cable on the top, which again, video, audio, bi-directional for, um, for audio, um, Ethernet, which is going to um, gonna connect and carry all of your various network versions of connections, the BNC connector for the, uh, for the 75 ohm connections like SDI, and I only threw this up there because the, the DVI connector is, is on its way out. But it was, it was also nice and confusing because you had an analog version, you had a I version, which was digital and analog, digital and analog, dual link, single link, dual link, digital, single link, digital, max resolution on various ones, bandwidth, you know. And good luck getting the spec from the manufacturer on what is on the back oh, of yeah. the thing. Right. Yeah, and knowing, and so you see, oh, it's a DVI connector. Which one? You know, so 
fortunately, we've moved on from that one, and we don't have to deal with it much anymore. Very fortunately. <laughs> That's, that's a DHCP. So I didn't have a, a, a picture to illustrate a DHCP, but I wanted to bring it up because it is, is something folks need to think about. D DCHP. DCHP, excuse me. Yeah. I'm reading dyslexically. I know, they're, they're, it's, it's very confusing. Yes, alphabet soup. So what does DHP stand for? Uh, I think it's actually supposed to be DCP. DC. It's It's... It's digital, digital content something protection or digital content something protocol. protection. Protocol. Yeah. Protocol. What? Protocol. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, forget DHCP. Yeah. Forget DHCP. That was forget that's that network. Forget, forget it. Lansing. But anyway, you guys, have you guys had any issues with that? Does anybody you, you run yeah. into it? Yeah. You're playing videos back, especially if you're doing stuff cross boundaries from different country codes, and you've got got those things where you own a bag a lot yeah so no. most professional gear will let you get it no, oh, no. It, not anymore especially on video switchers that we would install in churches especially mm -hmm. and uh, some of those uh, I think analog way has uh, the decoders on there uh, but some of them like I think Sony does not what were some yeah black ones? magic doesn't black magic doesn't so, so if you have to go from HDMI to SDI then you're going to lose your your um, your HD HDCP HDCP. There, there we go. HD, Sorry about you're that. You're going to lose your HDCP support. The interesting yeah. thing about the protection, yep, is you can buy a cheap two-way splitter HDMI <laughs> to HDMI, real cheap one. Yep, and it takes the protection away. Peels it off. Peels it off. Yep. Nice. Input nice. one, output two outputs. They come from and China and they're all infected right now. They're so. got Chrome. Yeah. 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 And also, <laughs> they're definitely illegal. Yeah. So so also, yeah. It, it is illegal. That. But that's this is to prevent copy. It's it's protection. copyright. Protection. It's copy protection. It's all the lords anyway, right? Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, you know, <laughs> you do have to comply with local ordinances still in uh, in in all matters not scripturally defined, and I don't think you're going to find digital copyright. Uh, so anyway, I apologize for messing that up. I did. I literally did all this PowerPoint during all the breaks and stuff today. We had talked about an outline the other day. I knew where we wanted to go, but I'm pulling it together. So a good yeah. integrator will always ask, "Are you going to be playing any? Mm -hmm. uh, you going to have movie night or anything like that?" And we'll make sure that that's in there. And uh, and I think legal. Roland's Roland's got a lot of their switchers yeah. will we'll pass it along and we'll, yeah. we'll take care of that for you because I did a bunch of PR for them at one time and it's like, DHC, you know, no problem. It's, it's, yeah. So uh, video really switcher good, uh, specs and like core to. functionality, again, I don't want to spend a lot of, uh, a, a lot of time on there because there's a lot of different ones out there. And yeah, because I did Roland PR, I got a lot of Roland pictures in there. And this one has, oh, this is an old one. It's got dreaded DVI connectors on it. <laughs> <laughs> but so composite, yeah, so but no, it's cool. a good it's a good switch. But it was a good front panel picture. Look, there's a reference on it. Remember sync? There's yeah. a reference in and through. Yep. Yep, there you go. And it even has composite standard def out if you need it. But Super. it's got HDMI on. It's actually a very flexible Roland makes a uh, I'm not selling for them, but they 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 make a lot of of good problem solving solutions that are really specific for a lot of different folks. It's like, oh, this switcher fits what these guys are doing perfectly because they're only a two camera operation. They've got the you know, pulpit, their cameras are set up that way. A five HDMI, one HDMI out just sets them up and you can do that for under 1500 bucks. Bam, done, you know, and, and it'll do, they'll most always do some tricks and do keying and do uh, functions that you'll never use. But something like this has scaling built in. It has um, switching built in. We'll get to scaling in a little bit. But your your simple basic, your you've you you're setting up cameras. You're using your T-bar or a fast switch or a pre-programmed effect to move between one camera to the other. Obviously, you know these kind of things from uh, um, from working with the video stuff. Really, the specifications that I care about for talking in this audience is. What are your camera outputs? Uh, or what can they be commonly adapted to if you've got a mismatch? What are you going into? What are you feeding? Um, are you feeding a converter for streaming? And are you feeding a projector? How many outputs does it have? Can you split off multiple buses? Can you use your 
maybe you don't need a preview bus uh, for it, but can you take that bus and then use it for an output for your streaming service so that you can have a separate um, a separate signal going to your streaming bus, or are there three buses effectively output? Do you have an aux bus that you can dedicate to, uh, to your streaming service and feed primarily a wide view uh, if you want to let it go at that? Or, you know, so what, do you, what are you really trying to do? And it's really just more of a matter of, uh, of, of knowing what kind of connections you've got, what kind of connections you expect to have in the near future, and, uh, and, and buying something that can accommodate those. It's like on this one, not all of those inputs are active all the time in some, you know, all of those connectors, but you have the choice of programming several of the inputs into uh, to various connectors so that you can go with that. Um, I just, uh, I just thought that was an interesting little, uh, little multi-view um, control center there from a Panasonic uh, um, camera controller and uh, a very nice video um, central distribution system for these guys. And it, it doesn't have, no, it's not Horizon Church. Horizon is the integrator. They made sure they got their name over all the pictures that were taken. Because <laughs> uh, they paid for the photography. And another one, just to say that sometimes you can, you can integrate a video switcher and, um, and rudimentary audio. This may be appropriate for a youth room or something like that where you're only going to have a, a, a few faders that you need to do. Something like this can be very effective and allow you to... Uh, to do multiple video feeds, switch between a lyrics uh, you know, pro presenter kind of input and um, a camera of the band or uh, presenter for iMac kind of thing, but also have rudimentary audio on one thing. This may be the solution. No, it's perfect. You can submix all of your audience mics through that. Yes. And send that yeah. to your console. Well, exactly. For that's a nice idea. Because we can't forget the audience mics. So, <laughs> projectors is is something I didn't. I've. I mean, I did. I've done used up used projectors, done articles on projectors, cleaning them, maintenance, which ones work which way. The move is towards video walls. I don't think that projectors are still there because they're still cost effective for a lot of situations. Um, they're easy, they're e much easier to maintain. They are much easier to maintain yeah. and uh, laser. Yeah. LED. Yeah. Yeah. What? We get a lot of those requests. Yeah. We want to put an LED wall and we have a five thousand dollar budget. Well, yeah. We well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So interface to projectors is going to be similar to, to what we've talked about there. Mostly it's going to be SDI uh, at this point because your projector, a projector at this level is going to be, well, it's going to be SDI or some Ethernet HDMI, based. HDMI, yeah. yeah. Uh, it can be HDMI, yeah. I think one, if, if you're by putting a projector like that's designed to be a long throw and in a ceiling or something, most of the time, they're going to have a more professional uh, yeah, connection yeah. than it's a, HDMI. It's more of a production to, uh, projector that, yeah, yeah, where you have to buy an add-on for it, interface. Right. right, and you can interface to it. The resolution, what resolution do you need? Um, defining that for a projector is not my strong suit. So what do you, I mean, if advice on that kind of thing, it totally depends on the screen size, how far the projector is away. What they're projecting. It all starts with content. What's what's mm -hmm. the content? Um, what's the image size that it has to be? Um, and working backwards from there. You want to talk about how you go through that? With yeah, the, yeah, with yeah. Absolutely. As far as resolution, you know, typically there are 4K projectors, right? But um, I don't think that we. I mean, this is not a 4K projector. I don't. I don't think it is. Mm -hmm. it, we're not sending in a 4K signal. I'll tell you that. No. Um, and so, uh, as a result. Um, you know, we're, we're mostly doing 1080p um, type stuff, um, some some 4K, but not a lot. Um, and uh, determining the screen height, right? Like, how big does my screen need to be so that I can see it when they put the lyrics up there? Um, there are there's a pretty simple math problem. You say, what is your furthest di viewer, and you divide that by eight, and that tells you what how tall your screen needs to be for general viewing videos, pro presenter you know, large lyrics, stuff like that. Furthest viewer divided by eight, that's going to give you your screen height. So that's a great way to estimate when you're starting to think about, okay, I, I want to put a screen in here. And the numbers change. So as you say, I need more analytical. So uh, not, not uh, you know, if you're saying, hey, we've got a conference room in our church and we want to be able to, excuse me, we want to be able to, uh, you know, have presentations and meetings in here. 
Um, so we're going to be making more critical decisions. Uh, well, then the, the number changes. It's not divided by eight. It becomes divided by six. And then if you say, no, we're actually going to be looking at drawings and we're going to be doing detailed you know, critical, decision. critical decisions of Excel documents that you divide it by four. Obviously, you realize as you divide it by the smaller number, you're going to have to have a larger screen. Um, so, And of course, your image size, let's say 16.9, mm -hmm. you've decided you're just going to have scripture, passive viewing. You're going to divide that by eight. Now you have your height. You have one side of that equation, right? So you put it back into the equation and get your width. Correct. 1.78. Yeah. 1.778. And what your method map is 1.6 if you're doing. <laughs> and the I other consideration for the audio guys is have some input while they're thinking about all that because you've got speakers perhaps hanging in there. You've got lines. Oh of man, I'll block, I'll block videos with speakers all day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but. You've got to take those things into consideration. Then, if yeah. if you don't, you're lighting up the speaker with the with with light, with a smeared image going across it. Obviously, those kind of things have to be taken in consideration. Uh, any competent installer is going to be doing that. If you're doing it yourself, maybe you need to think about it ahead of time. Absolutely, think about it. Yeah. So LED walls, same kind of general things go, but concepts like pixel pitch. So one pixel in a um, in an LED wall is made up of three LEDs. You know, you've got your red, green, black, which one's lit, and such is how you make your image. Of course, just it's it's dots. You've all seen them, seen a picture blown up to where, where it makes sense. The pixel pitch is the distance between uh, any two of those LEDs. So LED spacing, I mean, this is just graphics showing three LED spacing. Um, how far apart are they? The pixel pitch is 10 millimeter, they're 10 millimeter apart. 20 millimeter, they're 20. 40, they're 40 millimeter apart. How does that go into um, the resolution that you see and the resolution that you need? Those are the same identical drawing scaled four different sizes. So everybody sees the T as a solid bar on the, on the bottom left. On the top right, we can actually see individual pictures. Depending on how far back you are, it, they're all gonna they're all gonna move towards solid. Big surprise! There's a math problem. Yeah. <laughs> Want to share that? And it depends on which manufacturer you ask what yeah. the math problem is. No, um, so yeah. Typically, uh, for pixel pitch calculation, um, a safe number is to uh, take your closest viewer because we care about how close you are. Mm -hmm. Take your closest viewer and divide that by. Um, I don't know. There's there's two different ones that because there's two different manufacturers. One of them is is three and a half, and one of them is ten divided by three and a half. And one of them is divided by ten, and that gives you um, your your pixel pitch. Hang on, let me pull it up on my thing here. Which of course always having a range, just like when yeah. you're deciding image size, we like the range, right? Because uh, maybe you've uh, divided by uh, four and. The budget comes back. It's like, oh, actually, I can move up. I can step up my. Uh, I can have, my a, budget I can have a, a smaller bit. screen. That I've got about happens. three three but, graphic ways yeah, of looking yeah, at it as well. Sure. So, there you go. Um, now, this is minimum viewing distance. Correct. Closest. Yeah, it's viewer. opposed to closest maximum viewing distance. Viewer. This is the closest viewer that is going to see things as solid objects rather than pixelated. You know, so not see it as dots. Uh, the, that's what you've got to work out with that. So, if you, you're outdoors and you've got a image in Times Square that's up on the side of a building, your pixel pitch is wide because the closest person is 150, 200 yards away from it. You can use big fat dots and, and not have it look, uh, not too, uh, look too pixelated, but if it's on a wall in a hallway and people are walking past it, you can't get by with that. The TV in my living room at 1080p looks great from across the room, but if you walk up straight to it, especially where broadcast stations have splintered off part of their signal into uh, old westerns and whatever else um, they're showing on there, uh, and they've, they've squandered away a lot of their HD bandwidth, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look fuzzy right on top of it. So that, that math problem that I was talking about is, is kind of displayed here, right? Yeah. So they're suggest many manufacturers will suggest that um, that's that's where that kind of divide by ten thing came from. So if it's a one point five mil, mm -hmm. then uh, that's one point five meters away, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. That's a that's a pretty good 
rule of thumb. Right. Um, others will say uh, you could divide the closest viewer by three and a half. Um, For that yeah. illustration, I mean, it was just a, from that person standing there, those are going to look effectively the same um, resolution to him. And that one, that one comes up to meters is, 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 is even. So yep. anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, yet another way to look at it is, uh, is that size for that person standing there that, uh, that the, the relative level of those, of those height and so forth. And that has to do with the resolution, right? Yeah. So for a fixed resolution, if we're going to send in, and I'm going to make these numbers up, but if you're going to send in 1920 by 1080 to this video mm -hmm. wall, um, uh, actually it would be, so if you're going to just assume, we're going to assume here that the 1.9 pixel pitch is 1920 by 1080 in order to um, keep that um, as you ex uh, expand out, mm -hmm. that's kind of how the size, the physical size has to be larger to keep right. that same resolution because the pixels are further apart. Right. So yeah, if, you, if you're thinking about how big does my screen need to be to yes. do 1080p, right. and you know what the pixel pitch is, you can find out how big that is. Is that resolution sufficient with the physical size for that then? It's simple math problems. You could all figure the formulas out for that. But then you say, well, no, I need to make it bigger. And then I'm going to have to scale my video for that size, because I may actually need 16,000 pixels instead of 8,000 or 4,000. Yep. Right. Yep. You, you yep. So you end up always close. So you end up here thinking about. So one of the things that you think about is the photos that you've got and the images that you've got and such. And this was just a uh, a, a four by three photo. You take it. Well, you're going to put it on six by nine. What are you going to do with it? You're going to crop it. You're going to letterbox it and keep it the the original, or you're going to stretch it somehow. Um, and that comes up when you're applying those. Most of the time, your video switchers are going to either crop or letterbox. You know, you can scale it. They're not. They're going to smear it for you. Uh, at least the ones I've played with. This is a weird, and I don't even know if this is worth you, but it's like, I said, okay, so you take something that's really high quality, and this was also talking about folks that are, that are saving things in, um, for the internet or whatnot, and then they're coming back later and they're blowing it up, but these are, these are conversions that were just un, completely uncompressed. So that, that top left image is a raw, um, a raw file from a camera that's no lossy compression. Um, completely saved in all the original pictures that the camera saved it. Saving it then, just resaving it at a lower resolution in the middle, just decimating it down, you can see what that resolution did to the center part of the flower. So that's taking it from, um, from that raw resolution of, uh, of 3240 by, uh, my, or no, of, uh, 30, yeah, 3240. Yeah, the original wasn't 3240, the ori but the original, anyway. It was a 15 megapixel file, so it was a 15, it was big. Um, and I didn't have that in the caption. So saving it to that middle middle one and then going over and bumping it back up to a 4K resolution, you know, you're actually lost. At every stage, you've lost resolution and you've lost picture. Now, the big image doesn't look bad, but you can see loss of loss of detail and such in there. You can survive some of these things, but I just wanted to show that you know you, you can't throw stuff away and put it back in. Just like an MP3. Yep. <laughs> Except this, yeah, and this is literally just decimating the data. I didn't want to do JPEGs yeah. that were lossy compression yeah. and stuff, but uh, these were all saved as PSDs, so they were at least keeping all the original bits as, that you could, all the original bits that you choose to keep. Them. Just goes to show that it's a lot easier. You can mess up video and, and no one's going to care, but if you convert yeah. your wave file to MP3 well, and that is back true. to a wave, it's still going to be bad. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Okay. So again, then you, you end up with a video wall. You built your, you built your big wall back here that's going to be the, the replacement for your screen and you're sending images to it. It's going to be built up. It, you can do a video wall that is built of uh, 16 by 9 displays. You can do a video wall that is built out of the uh, out of the standard video wall panels that are square, and and you're doing video blocks. Um, once you get them up there, what you do? That's four screens acting as act, acting as one with a 
very badly drawn middle line on it, but the lines can be nearly seamless now, or actually seamless for all, of, all infects and purposes. So the LG is a 0.4 millimeter bezel? Yeah. Yeah, they have a so display it's, yeah. that's a point like four. Yeah. Mil. So it's you had fat area. bezels at one time. We don't have to worry about fat bezels now. Now, once you've got multiple displays like that in individual displays, or you've got individual panels on the wall with good software, with the right equipment, you can now start playing with your images and doing much more with them. You've got a video wall. You can map that video wall, typically software that comes from the manufacturer, but also specific hardware that says, in my hardware, I've defined my video wall is X by Y. Now, I can divide that up into four screens. I can use it as one big screen. I can drop things in in various places. So you could take two, uh, three images here and send it in and then drop one up in the, in the top left. You could put your videos in part of it and iMag in the rest. You could put iMag in the corner of it and put videos on the right side. You, know, you, can, you can have some flexibility that will let you do that. The scaling and the size you have to take into consideration what your original source material is, whether it'll work over, how you're going to control that, who's going to control that. You can do a certain amount of this from switchers. Uh, and there are switchers that will take um, one of the last Roland ones I played with, and I've forgotten the nomenclature for the f effect, but you can take a high-res 4K camera and carve images out of it and actually use multiple, so you've got a large view, but you've actually got the close-up of the pastor that just carved out of that large view, and you can switch between two shots from one camera. And, and while you're looking at that one, you could set up another one that is the lead guitar player, and for his solo, you're switching over to him from the worship leader. So there are, there are a lot of capabilities that the, that the video wall approach in, and multi-view does. You could have a long wall, and then split one shot up between three of them, or have independent things popping up on all of them. Um, or the, uh, the multi-view situation where you're, you're flying in various different things into uh, one. Yes, I went to Portugal. Um, vacation photos, because they were pretty, and I didn't mind looking at them some more. So um, interface for the walls and scaling, then um, interface becomes, again, it's, it's SDI, or it's, it's going to be networked, and it's, or it's going to be something specific networking as the actual wall itself is going to be specific to the manufacturer but there's a box that's hooked up to it and and you're driving it and they're just they're just taking the data you know it's all a bunch of dots and it's really just deciding i got this picture right here and it's all of these dots and now i'm going to put some of them up there and i'm going to put them over there and i'm going to use up dots on that screen and then I've got some dots left over, or I don't. If you, if you just think of it as a, as a big grid, as graph paper, and you're deciding what's going on that chunks on that graph paper, you can, uh, that's scaling in a nutshell. And uh, we- so, so before we go on to yeah, this, uh, back on that. video walls, yeah, here, here are the things to consider, especially yes, if you're considering perfect. putting in a video wall. Everybody else has a video wall, I mm -hmm. want one too. All right, here's, here are the two biggest things to consider. Number one, uh, the three biggest things, number one, uh, weight. So video walls are heavy. Okay, mm -hmm. even the new ones, they've got lightweight ones. They're light. They're still heavier than a video screen. So you've got to consider: Do I have the structural support to actually either physically mount it to a wall or suspend it from the ceiling? So mm -hmm. consideration number one. Consideration number two is um, your um, your ability to maintain that. Mm -hmm. So LED walls, um, they need a little bit more love and care. Um, to keep them kind of going. They typically have a burn-in period uh, where they have to run for 90 days or 120 days and things are going to go out and they're going to, manufacturers going to send you replacement parts, all that kind of stuff. So keep that in your mind. There's going to be some burn-in time and, and some time where you're going to have to kind of pay attention to what's happening and, and kind of tech or maintain that video wall. And then the third one is power. Um, so these things suck up a lot of power, right, to drive all those pixels. So do you have the power available to run to that wall so that you can actually power it and turn it on. So keep those kind of things at the back of your mind as you're as you're considering a video wall versus a projector, right? Um, and then you know, still there there are definitely opportunities where where the video wall stuff is is the best. In particular, if you got a lot of you know really bright room, or you got a lot of a bounce from your front light off the stage onto your projection screen or whatever, then video walls can really help solve. It's also those Ambient light situations yeah. are, are horrible in projectors. Yep. I'm not going to talk, Luke talked about sync in, in great detail. 
I wanted to show you one lip sync chart that I had. I don't know if you've seen it. This was a, um, I believe it was a British study uh, where they were talking about the detectability, and this is this is deep and such. But if you are um, if you are having sync issues and such with uh, with with spoken word, you're seeing the lips move. Sound comes out later. Sound comes out earlier. How detectable is that? And the detectability threshold for sound advanced relative to video is what 45. You know, 40, yeah, 45 mil. Yep, 45 mils on that. And then on the other side, you can put up with a with sound delay from from video a lot better than you can pick up than than you can tolerate sound being advanced from it. Sure. Fortunately, most of the time it is a sound delay issue because video processing uh, for scaling for uh, resolution sync uh, and such takes longer than audio processing and the video, the time-wise, the amount of, of MIPS being used to uh, process the signals along and do format conversions and such for video is going to mean that the audio is ahead of the video um, and, and, the, uh, and the sound delayed. And that's more readily fixable because an analog, audio, I mean an audio delay is an easier, cheaper thing to, to find. Well, in, in especially, especially since we haven't been in time travel yet. Yes, exactly. If, you're, if your audio is uh, behind your video, then you're going to have to invent time travel to speed your audio up somehow. Well, you just have to delay the video. Come on. <laughs> time travel. It's hard to do. It's a hard thing to do. But anyway, I just thought that was, that was interesting to show how, from, from their study, where that detectability kicks in, uh, that you can, tolerate, you can tolerate a sound delay a lot easier than you can tolerate uh, a, a sound leading ahead of it when you're watching the video and, and getting bothered by the sync. Yeah, but based on that math that we saw, right, if you got a 48K console and you're running at 60 frames a second, you're mm -hmm. at about 16.6 .6 milliseconds per frame. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a frame sync that's adding three or four frames and you've got more stuff processing down the line, you're getting six, seven frames behind, then you're, you're getting, you're, that 120 shows up real fast, right? Yeah. You get there real fast, so.